Hello and welcome to Let's Play Super Mario Brothers 3 on the NES. It's kind of weird. There's no like intro music or anything. There is in the Super Nintendo version, which which gives it you know a leg, uh, an advantage over the over the NES version because this is kind of awkward. It kind of suffers from uh, Mega Man One syndrome where there was no intro music, no intro animation sequence, nothing, just straight into the title. Uh, but yeah, Super Mario Bros. 3, uh, 1988. I don't know why I felt the need to mention the year, uh, but this is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, uh, NES game of all time. And uh, uh, it's it's kind of in the same vein of Kirby Superstar in that uh, I used to play this growing up. Not the NES version, but... Uh, the the Super Nintendo version in Super Mario All Stars. I used to play that all the time when I was a little kid, so I've got some fond memories with this game. And I know this game like the back of my hand pretty much. Well, at least the first couple of worlds. Then after that, it gets a little bit fuzzy. Like in in worlds five and six, then it gets like okay, I don't really remember this very much. But anyway, I digress. Uh, here we are in world one. This is Grassland and. Uh, what's cool about this game is you have like a little map and uh, This returned in Super Mario World, but wasn't in any game prior to this. So this is really cool uh, We can choose what level we want to go to you don't just go straight from level to level like in Mario 1 So yeah, it's this game is is beautiful by the way. It's got some nice vibrant colors and uh a good variety of enemies. A lot of uh, Mario enemies in general were uh, originally from this game, which is really cool. Oh, no, I forgot to... <laughs> of course, I picked up the, the, the leaf without saying anything, but the big thing about Mario 3 is uh, the raccoon tail, which lets you... Well, you can you can press B and like use it as a weapon, as like a melee attack, uh, but it also lets you fly and glide. Uh, it's pretty broken, actually. Like when I now that I think about it, um, it kind of negates like a lot of the challenge of the platforming, which is what Mario is all about, really. Um, it definitely has checks uh, so that it doesn't become too unbalanced, but it is a very useful power up, and it is something that they did not bring back. Uh, until, uh, well, the Raccoon Tail didn't really come back until uh, New Super Mario Brothers 2 on the 3DS, which was, like, what, 20, 24 years later? I think, if my math is, I don't know if my math is right. This came out in 88, and Mario, New Super Mario Brothers 2 came out in 2012, I think. Uh, the Tanuki suit, though, which is a different power-up in this game, was in uh, Mario 3D Land. That was like the the big selling point of that game. And uh, at the end of each stage, there's a little card thing. Uh, if you have, if you get a running start, there's like a little P meter. See that little P meter at the bottom of the screen? If you get that filled up, which you can do by just running. Uh, in a straight line, basically. Uh, if you have that filled up, that's what that's what actually lets you fly if that's full. Um, and there's like a specific angle. If you have the P meter full and you hit the the block at the end at like a very specific angle, then you can get a star. Uh, in the bottom right, you can see. So, uh, sorry if I'm like I'm sure you guys know Super Mario Brothers three, so I hate to go into like excruciating detail about the mechanics and everything but of course there are always some people who have never uh, played this game before and have no idea um, those little boxes at the bottom right corner of the screen uh, that's where the cards we collect are going to show up and if we get three stars in a row essentially we can get five extra lives which is amazing. So I'm going to try and go for all three stars. And of course, uh, the map, the interesting thing about this game is the uh, 
Oh, crap. The overworld map thing uh, lets you kind of skip levels. It lets you skip certain levels if you don't want to particularly do them. Um, uh, okay, that was kind of weird. And uh, in the sense that you can just kind of walk around the levels you don't want to do. Um, it, you can only do that in like very specific circumstances, so don't get too excited yet. And I really wanted a, a, a raccoon tail for this because I was going to... Okay, thank God. Okay. I didn't know that was there, actually. I found that on total accident, so <laughs> that's pretty good luck on my part, I guess. Yeah, there's a hidden block right here, and if you jump on it, it'll take you to the wonderful coin heaven. And the reason I wanted to have the a tail uh, when I came into this was... I have to get the timing right, but if you fly up here, uh, yeah, there is a one-up and a, a couple extra coins as well. So that's a nice little secret. A lot of people know how to get to coin heaven, but not many people know about that secret one-up. <laughs> uh, of course, there is a well-known secret in this stage, uh, which uh, has something to do with this white block right here, but... I am not going to do that in this run. I may do it as like a bonus episode or something at the very end. But there we go. We got the three stars in a row. If you know the secret to getting the star, then it's pretty easy. Otherwise, it's uh, more or less random, I think. I don't know exactly how that works. Uh, but I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, yeah. So, like I said, uh, on the map... The cool thing is, if I didn't want to do level 4, or if I was having a lot of trouble with level 4, you don't really have to do it. You could just go right to this castle right here, which is awesome. Um, there's a few worlds later on where, like, the levels get really tough. I'm thinking about World 5 in particular, when you go to the sky, not to spoil anything, but... Um, there are some levels there that give me some trouble, and in a casual playthrough, I would normally skip them. I'm not going to be skipping any levels uh, for this, because I want to show like everything the game has to offer, I guess. Um, and I also don't want to be a lamezoid and, and make it seem like I can't play Mario, because I'm an expert at this game, man. I can, I can beat this game with my eyes closed. Oh my god, dude, really? Okay. That was a little a bit embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> I could beat this game with my eyes closed and then proceeds to fall off a cliff. Okay. Well, to be fair, I am uh, getting used to the controls again. I've been playing Mega Man a lot, so, and the controls are a little bit different. Mario is a little bit more floaty, so it's kind of hard to adjust. I'll get there, don't worry. Uh, this game always gives me trouble. I can never do it right for the life of me. I can do everything else in this game like a champ, but I can't do that. And here we are at our first fortress. Hopefully the microphone doesn't freak the fuck out at all this Fs, all this alliteration. Here we have some atomic waffles. And uh, the introduction of Poda... No, actually, that's not right. They were in Mario 1. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, there is another secret right here in the very first world. Very well-known secret. Uh, I'm, I'm going to also going to save that for the bonus video because I want to I want to show the boss of the fortress. Uh, so, like in every in every world in this game, there's going to be fortresses just like this one. Basically, it's a normal level, just with different aesthetics. And the same boss, the same exact boss in every single fortress, which is this guy, Boom Boom. And he's the easiest motherfucker in the world. Unless, of course, you're small, and then he becomes, like, for some reason, insanely difficult. No big deal. Fortresses are not a big deal. The thing you really want to worry about is the castle at the end of the map. 
because those can sometimes suck really bad. Uh, level four, I'm gonna try and do this thing uh, where in this level in particular, if you get every single coin in the stage, then you unlock a, a like a special uh, house, a special mushroom house that gives. This sounds like like I'm a crazy person. Like I sound like I just smoked a bunch of crack and I'm like telling this insane story, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. If you get all the coins in the stage, then you unlock a, a white mushroom house that will give you a P-Wing, which will basically allow you to fly. If you equip it, uh, it'll allow you to fly across the entire stage. Or No, god damn it. There's probably one more coin left in that box. Fuck. It's okay. It's alright. I didn't need the P-Wing anyways. Oh, yeah, this is annoying right here, because you don't really have enough room to get the running start that you need for the star. There we go. I found a way. Life finds a way. Oh! Okay, I... Apparently I unlocked it somehow anyway, <laughs> even though I didn't get all the coins. Oh, this is the card game. Uh, okay, so here's the second, like, Toad minigame. This definitely has a some kind of pattern. I don't always know exactly what it is. No, okay. You get two tries, and then, and then you're done, so. Hello, you found my shop of strange and wonderful things. There it is, there's our P-Wing. That'll give us unlimited P. <laughs> God, that... Sounds ridiculous. Okay. Uh, in the next episode of Mario 3... Oh, I probably should mention this. I'm really dumb. There's a lot of things I need to mention because this game introduced a lot of new features. Uh, if you press B on the map screen, you have an inventory actually in this game. So uh, the fire flower that I got from Toad earlier and the P-Wing that I just got are stored in my inventory and I can select them and use them before I go into a, a level if I wanted to. That's basically it. So if I, if I wanted to be, instead of Raccoon Mario, if I wanted to uh, be Fire Mario, then I could use the Fire Flower here and go into stage five with the Fire Power Up. I don't want to do that though, because Raccoon Tail is like the best <laughs> power up in this entire game. Anyway. I digress again. In the next episode of Super Mario Bros. 3, we will go into stage 5 and then stage 6. Maybe finish the world, I don't know, we'll see. Tune in next time.